Hello YouTube, welcome to this video. So I'm doing this uh, to see if it's worth getting high-end hardware for modded city skylines. This is a very heavily modded map. We've got about 130,000 people. Uh, quite a big expansive city. A uh, bit of public transport but not that much. So um, yeah, I've got a lot of traffic president as well which slows the game down. Um, you can see that when we go to the lane connector you'll see that this highway is more or less all done with lane connector. That's all to try and get the, the cars to use the lanes. Obviously with a 12 lane highway that's a bit tricky given the AI in City Skylines but anyway. Um, so yeah the FPS really declined as the city built up and as I added more mods and assets and the simulation speed went down to a crawl as well this is on the new CPU, spoiler alert um, I'm sure many of you are in the same situation you don't really want to get rid of mods because you've become dependent on them and uh, yeah you want to know is it worth it to get new hardware so that's basically what this video is about so the way I decided to measure the benchmarks is use this program, this mod cinematic camera extended and what you can do with this is create a sequence by uh, and then you can load them save and load them so this is the one I've been using I won't do it now because it takes ages but uh, yeah that's that's how I've managed to get a, a fair test as you would say and then I also use fraps to measure the average and minimum FPS so I'll put a bar chart after each test to see what the result was so yeah hope you enjoy the video first things first then the CPU comparison and there isn't that much difference but the values seem to change quite a lot and one CPU will be better on one part of the sequence and the other on the other part so the Intel started off strong now the AMD CPU is taking over dominance but as you go a bit further you start to see the Intel CPU take a, quite a substantial lead I'm not exactly sure why this is but it seems to have quite a big effect because when you look at the overall benchmarks the Intel does top the charts and it's a similar story with the GTX 1080 Ti so at this point you're probably thinking have I wasted my money on buying a brand new Ryzen system when it actually performs worse than the previous system But the FPS is not the only thing worth considering when you're looking at CPU performance in City Skylines. It's also simulation speed should be uh, paid attention to. And there's actually a mod uh, that records the time uh, taken for a day um, in the top left corner. You might be able to see it. It's reading 12.6 currently. This is on the AMD CPU. Um, and I'm, re I'm really annoyed that I didn't manage to get a recording of this on the Intel CPU but I remember um, watching this bridge here, this one that I'm looking at now I haven't made any other changes to the map and it got as low as 23 and uh, the lower is better and so yeah the lowest I got was 23, it was often going more than that this on the AMD CPU as you can see is 13.1 and it's it can go below that so that's actually a massive difference almost almost half so the AMD CPU is much better apparently at simulation speed calculations another thing worth thinking about when it comes to CPUs is the startup time now I'm not really and by startup time I mean uh, when does the simulation speed stabilize in the game I'm not sure if anyone 
is, knows what I'm talking about, but it's basically when you start up the game and the cars will kind of really slow down for a while. This this number here will go up quite a lot, and then it will stabilise after a while. Now, that's only really when you've got quite a high population, 130,000 I've got, and also when you've got um, when you've got a lot of stuff with the traffic president mod, as I have. Um, but yeah, when you start up the game, it just kind of waits for ages before it gets before it stabilizes. And on the Intel CPU, that took like 10, 15 minutes. It was really annoying. On the AMD CPU, it you barely even notice it. It happens a bit, but um, yeah. It ha it's over in like a minute because this number here on the Intel went up to like 50 before it stabilized back to like 25 and on the AMD it goes up to like 15 then stabilizes back down to 12 so yeah that's another big advantage to the Ryzen system So now onto the GPU comparison and similarly to the CPU comparison there is not much difference. The 1080 Ti does have a slight advantage although there are parts where the R9 390 actually has an advantage over the Ti. Another thing worth noticing is the VRAM usage. Both systems are more or less maxed with the R9 390 having a maximum of 8GB and the GTX 1080 Ti having a max of 12GB and uh, it is actually using all of the memory of the VRAM on both of them. Uh, so this probably accounts for some of the performance difference we see. However, the overall performance results recorded from the FRAPS benchmark show that there really isn't much difference between the two. Another topic worth bringing up would be the Radeon Relive software versus the uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay. And I preferred the Radeon Relive because you could actually record directly from the game uh, whereas on the Nvidia it's definitely a glitch uh, I had to start at the desktop and record through the, all the loading screens and everything that was a bit annoying and it took me a while to figure out why it wasn't working initially so that's one niggle I have with the Nvidia side also you have to create an account with the Nvidia graphics card which is quite annoying and here is a final summary of the results of the entire test all together in one place so you can have a look at that and I'll tell you a little bit about what I decided to go with in the end. I've decided to sell the GTX 1080 Ti because the performance increase was not very significant and it's a very high value item. I can sell it for £600 and uh, yeah I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'll keep stick with my R9 390. I will keep my Ryzen 7 1700X CPU, even though I was hoping it would increase the FPS, and it didn't. Um, it provides a very big improvement to the simulation speed. The simulation speed was really starting to annoy me on the i5, and it's going to be great to have that back up to a good level. Um, and it was like double the performance on that regard. So yeah it looks like I'll be coming away from this with an all AMD build and uh, yeah the moral of the story is that upgrading your hardware will not necessarily solve all your problems with uh, people who use lots of mods but if you want that simulation speed improvement you're gonna need an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen CPU so if you're gonna build a, 
a computer from scratch, that's the CPU I would go with. If FPS is your main concern, your best bet is probably the i7 7700K. Um, but one point I want to add is that it's very nice editing this video with the 1700X rather than the video I did a couple of months ago with the i5. It's so much nicer and smoother to edit. Um, in regard to the graphics cards, um, you don't really need for 1080p much more than a 99390 level uh, graphics card. So RX 480, uh, GTX 1060, something about that level is probably what all you need. Keep in mind VRAM, so 8GB of VRAM is probably your minimum but uh, there's no need in getting a 1080 Ti unless you're going to be doing 1440p or 4k gaming. And that is about all I would have to say about that. If you have any questions please ask in the comment section and uh, stay tuned for more Atlanta videos. That was a terrible accent. Bye.